Hello friends and fashion lovers, welcome and welcome back. Thank you for clicking on this video and thank you for all your love and support. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how I made this lovely baby dress with an elasticated straps at the back. If you're here for the first time, my name is Esther. If drafting and sewing your own pattern seems like what you're interested in, please click on that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified each time a new video is uploaded. Thank you. Without wasting much of your time, let's meet the materials. For this tutorial, I'm using a white fabric, an elastic band, a polka dot design fabric, and a lining. The measurement you need for the making of this dress is displayed on the screen. To get started with the drafting, I'm marking my guideline, which will serve as my shoulder line. Then from the shoulder line, I'm marking the chest line. Back to the shoulder line, I'm putting half of the shoulder width measurement minus one inch since the dress will have straps you don't want it exactly at the shoulder point then i'm going into mark the neck width and the neck depth this part is optional marking the neck depth but it just helps you to understand how this pattern works I'm just taking the shoulder width measurement that I have here minus one and marking it on the chest line. On the chest line, I am marking quarter of the round chest measurement plus my seaming allowance. Next thing to do is to connect to form my arm hole. Then I go in to mark my bodice length. Then put quarter of the round waist measurement plus seam allowance. I just use the same measurement as the chest. If you have this pattern ready, let's get with the adjustment. So you're going to find the midpoint right here and determine how wide you want your strap to be. I want a one inch strap, so I'm taking half inch on either side of this midpoint. So after that, I just take that same measurement at the shoulder and mark it on the chest line. You want to be sure it's the same point. You don't want your strap to be crooked. With that marked out, the next adjustment is the neck line. So you don't want it high up there. So you can adjust it by half inch or one inch. So I choose to adjust it by half inch. Then connect this new neck line to the ham hole. You can use a curve ruler to aid you or you can use freehand. So now that this is connected, you want to really indicate the center point of your strap so that when you're cutting out your pattern piece, you will know exact point so that you notched it. And the, this front pattern is going to be cut on fold. Just for an extra step, I like to go in by the side and take half inch and just blend that out. It's just an extra step. So the adjustment was the neckline, the strap. So please note that if you have your bodice already. So now that we are done with the front, let's quickly go to the back. You are repeating the same step for the back, but with a little twist. So now that my strap is marked, I just make sure that my strap goes straight to my chest line, unlike the front bodice. And I just gave it a slight curve at the end, just the same way I did for the front. So now, please note where your straps are. So I'm just going in to give it a slight curve, but at the end of the day, I noticed that the curve wasn't really obvious. So it was unnecessary. So now I am going to start with dividing my center back into three equal parts. These three parts I'm marking, I am just marking one inch 
in between the three parts so you might just end up marking two parts or it depends on how many straps you are going to have I want to have three straps at the back and the width of whatever elastic you have determine the width of your strap how much you divide this back then I am going to mark 1.5 inch away from the center back so I'm marking 1.5 inch away from my center back I guess this 1.5 inch works for almost every size I would have marked 2 inches or 3 inches but I'm just considering the younger one so marked 1.5 five inch away from the center back and you are going to indicate the straps what do i mean by dividing the center back into three parts i am having three straps here the width of my elastic is one inch so by the time i'm dividing this back into different parts I am going to take into consideration the width of my elastic so I mark one inch leave a space mark one inch I left the space and I mark the other one that is going to be attached to my skirts for younger babies you might only need two straps that is the upper one and the one connecting the skirts. With this, my pattern is ready and I'm going to cut it out. You want to make sure that you have your strap as one piece. Right here, I'm showing you that I have the strap for the back and a strap for the front. So you want to connect the strap. So I'm using a little bit of leftover allowance that I have to gum the strap to make sure that it's one piece. And when you are cutting it on a pattern, you're going to have seaming allowance connecting this strap to the bodice. Don't forget, you're going to be sewing the strap to the bodice. To have a clearer picture of the back, I made sure that my back was drafted on four. So after cutting out my back pattern, I am going to indicate where the straps will be attached to the bodice. You need to mark this out because when you are cutting it on fabric, you are expected to have it at the right point. And for the center back straps, when you are cutting it on fabric, you are cutting double it. Please don't forget to include seaming allowance to the side of this pattern, especially those ones you are sewing back together. I've used my pattern and cut out my fabric and I have a seaming allowance up here on the bodice, the front bodice. You need to add seaming allowance since you are stitching it back to the strap. On the back bodice, they have seaming allowance up here, just as the front. And I also have seaming allowance by the center. For the strap, I used my pattern and cut the elastic. The elastic has extra one inch seaming allowance because I'll be stitching it on both sides of the back bodice. Then for the fabric that is on the center back, you want to double the measurement you have on the pattern don't forget it was full pattern so you want to double that and add your seaming allowance so for my the length of my strap here so i have to add seaming allowance because it's going to in it's going to be an elastic casing so you need to add extra seaming allowance so that you'll be able to turn your elastic your elastic is going to be in the middle of this center Back. so if you have a one inch elastic you do well to cut your center back make sure that you have three inches that is one and a half inch when it unfold so right now i am going to go ahead 
and notch where my straps will sit. You want to do this for both the front bodice and the back bodice using your pattern as the aid. Starting with the stitching, I am placing my straps right side facing. I'm doing this for the strap that I'm going to have on the shoulder and the center back. When it comes to the center back, I am using the two center back straps, not the last one that will be attached to the skirts. That one is not going to be enclosed like that yet. So I'm going to stitch it. So here I have stitched my strap. So I'm going to use a safety pin and turn them right side out. So if you hook up a safety pin on one side, you can easily turn it right side out. Repeating these steps for all the straps here. So after turning them right side out, you can give it a good press, but I'm going to place them back in their position to avoid confusion because we are taking it one after the other. So now to my front bodice, you want to open it up like so. So I'd already notched where the strap will sit. Normally the strap will sit this way. So that's how the strap will normally sit. So you have to turn it and make sure that you have it inside. Now sandwich your strap in between your front bodice. If you have done that, go ahead and secure it in place. And you're going to stitch that upper part of your bodice, just the upper part. I'm going to quickly move this pattern out of the way. If you have stitched the upper part, you go ahead and notch. You need to notch this curve area. It's important so that your work will be neat. So after notching, turn it right side out. Now to the back bodice, you make sure that you sandwich it just the same way that you did the front. You sandwich the strap in between. So you want to do this, making sure that the notch part that your center strap is going on, it is in the middle. That notch part has to be in the middle. So now go ahead and stitch your back bodice. So, so I'm moving the back pattern away. So now if yours is curvy, give it a notch. Then you can give it a good press. Now you're going to place right side facing the back and the front. The lining facing the lining, your fashion fabric facing your fashion fabric. You stitch the side of your bodice. But before stitching the side of the bodice, I am going to put this band just to tie in the color of this dress. So I'm going to put this band on. And this band is measured 4 inches. And when folded, it's 2 inches on fold. So here, I have stitched my bodice. But I didn't totally stitch everything complete. You will see much later. So what I'm going to do right now is to sew my center back. So I'm just encasing my elastic with the aid of my safety pin in those tubes or strap that I had already sewn. So I'm just putting my elastic band there and securing it in place. You want to pin that in place. So you can see how twisted it looks. And for the down parts, you are going to just pin your elastic like so. You just want to pin your elastic. And you are going to stitch it close. You are not turning it anything right side out. You are just going to stitch just to secure it in place. After stitching, you want to place this strap right side facing you want to pin them only to your fashion fabric at the point that you have notched after pinning it in place before stitching it down 
you want to push this band onto the right side and lift your lining up and cover the band. You want to lift your lining and cover the band and stitch it right there. So after stitching, you should have a properly enclosed band into your back bodice. So it's time to do the same step for the other side. After stitching, don't forget to cut back a little bit, especially the sharp corner before turning it right side out. Please, don't forget to do that. So by the time you are done stitching both sides, you should have an elasticated back. So that's how you get this elasticated back. So it's time to complete the side. I told you I didn't stitch the side totally. So I am going to make a back tie to this dress and what I did was just take two strip that was measured 27 inches and I slanted a bit and stitched it. After stitching I just snipped the corners just to have a nice and crispy pointy edge. Then I go ahead and turn it right side out. After turning it to the right side out I'm just going to fix it by the side of my dress, just a matter of fixing it by the side of the dress and completing that seam. If you have stitched the side and gotten to this point, your bodice is ready. This is how I made the elasticated center back bodice. So to my skirts now, I have both my fashion fabric and my lining piece. So my lining is two inch shorter than my fashion fabric and my skirt length is my dress length minus my bodice length. Don't forget to add one inch to your skirt length. Then the width of it is three times the waist measurement. At least that is what I use. Now to my skirt piece, I am going to be adding this polka dot fabric on it. So you want to make sure that you place the right side of your fabric facing the wrong side of the skirt. The right side of the fabric should be facing the wrong side of the skirt. So I'm going to go ahead, pin that in place and stitch it down. So after stitching, I am going to flip the fabric to the front. You just have to push back on your seaming allowance you could under stitch you can just iron it flat and make sure that you stitch that fabric tucking in about quarter inch to half inch in and you stitch it so after stitching this is what it looks like so i'm going to go ahead and join the side of my dress making sure to have the right side facing I did not complete the seam, so it was easier for me to make it as neat as I can make it. So after stitching right side facing, this is how my skirt looks like. It's finished nicely. I use a French seam. So I'm going to sew the next band on it. So the next band, you want to make sure that it has even spacing. I decided to use a 2.5 inch spacing and you're going to sew that down as well. So just stitch that in place. Make sure that the spacing is even. So you can as well pin it. So now the band is stitched down. I use a white thread in my bobbin so the inside is neat. So the next thing I'm going to do will be to gather the waist of this my skirt. So I'm going to gather it up and I'll be stitching it to my bodice. So I'll stitch it to my bodice and I'll also stitch my lining to my bodice. I have gathered my lining and then I've hemmed the down. So this is how the finished product looks. It's neat on the inside. So the elasticated back is right there and it's quite full. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.